Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I'll be talking about Ray Bradbury's Green Shadows White Whale. It's signed. Woo! To Ed. I don't know who Ed is. I had an idea of what this was, but I'm still not 100% sure what I can trust and what I can't trust. This is a novelization of a memoir of Ray Bradbury's. And it covers the period of about seven months to a year that Ray Bradbury was in Ireland, specifically near Dublin, and worked on the script for the movie Moby Dick. The 1956 Moby Dick that starred uh, Gregory Peck. Amazing version of Moby Dick. Like, my favorite by far. Gregory Peck has completely won me over with his performance in that movie, but I didn't really know the backstory. And this goes into, I think. Now this basically took place in 1953, or that's when Ray Bradbury was in Ireland. And he worked on the script with the producer, John Huston, who was a, a famous producer, multi Oscar winning producer who apparently was very difficult to work or live with. I think he had like five wives. One or two died in car accidents or something and the other ones he just divorced. Apparently he was very hard to deal with and eventually he renounced his US citizenship and became a citizen of Ireland. And this has to do with Ray Bradbury's experience working with Huston. Now, they didn't get along. Although in this book, it seems like they, they kind of got along for most of it. There was a bit of a falling out at the end, but they repaired their their issues. Uh, I said this was probably set in 1953. This book wasn't written until 1992, so about 40 years after this experience by Ray Bradbury. The interesting thing with this book is it's fictional, and I don't know what is true in this book and what is completely fictional, what is inspired by Ray Bradbury's experiences and what is completely made up. I just don't know. I don't know if that information is available somewhere. It seems like there are a lot of parallels in this book with what actually happened in his life, especially on this project. There is a copy of the screenplay that you can buy for $4,000 on eight books, along with a signed copy of this book, but I haven't done that. I really like the book. There are all these fun stories in here by local pub owners and drinkers that are very Irish stories, I guess. I, I think that's the point of, of the stories. And the locations in this book, I think, are true. Uh, I looked up one of them. It, has been, it was torn down in the 80s, but it existed since the 1700s. So I think that the, the Royal Hibernian Hotel in Dublin. I, this is my first experience with Ray Bradbury, and I was happy with it. I have another of his books. I have Something Wicked This Way Comes, which I haven't read yet, but I'll be reading this year at some point, probably in the near future. This is a book that I am categorizing as a Moby Dick related book. There's not a whole lot about the movie in this book. There are references to different scenes. There are some parallels that Ray Bradbury draws in this book with what happens in the movie. And really the very end of this book is when Ray Bradbury kind of channels Herman Melville and finishes the final 40 pages of the screenplay and uh, presents them to John Huston and they're like perfect. And he was just, he wrote seven straight hours one day when he looked in the mirror and kind of saw Melville and kind of had Melville right through him. So that's, you know, kind of where it ends. The, the movie's great, and I would love to have a look at the screenplay because I some of the changes that Ray Bradbury made in the screenplay from the book are included in this book. Like, just the way that he made changes to the story, I think, really worked for the movie because there are some aspects of Moby Dick that probably just would have been a little too too clumsy or a little too cluttered for a movie. So it was adapted, so it would work better. Um, I like the copy I have. It's a really cool picture on the front. It's also illustrated. Oh, here's Ray Bradbury with his cat. 
Um, it's also illustrated, not, not a whole lot of illustrations, but enough to keep it interesting. And it has this kind of edging. I don't know what this is called. It's nice. It's, it's, it's like a very comfortable edge for turning pages, but it does make it hard to find pictures, illustrations. First Ray Bradbury experience. I liked it. I give it five stars. As far as I can tell, this is probably the last Moby Dick related book that I have waiting. There are other whaling books and whale books still to be read, but anything related directly or indirectly to Moby Dick, I think has been, has been read in my collection. And this was the final one. So I liked it. I, I, I think even if you don't know about Moby Dick, this is a fun read. It's a different read. And I think it's probably a little different for Ray Bradbury too, but I haven't read any other Ray Bradbury, so I don't know. I used to watch the show on TV that Ray Bradbury produced, which are really creepy shows. Episode, I think there were 30 minute episodes. And when I was growing up, I would watch some of those. They were really creepy. This is not a creepy book. I think there are also references in this book to other works that he's done. And this is a period of time for Ray Bradbury that a lot of his future work was inspired I think Ray Bradbury was in his early 30s when this time period was for him in the in the 50s. I think a lot of what he experienced in Ireland helped either inform or inspire his future writing. But because I haven't read any of his other work yet, it's hard for me to, um, to kind of nail that down. So that's going to be the next thing for me is to to start jumping into what he has written that are very familiar titles that I just haven't read yet. So, thanks for being here today. Awesome book. And what an experience it has been learning about Moby Dick. And experience Ray Bradbury for the first time. Thanks.